Hey guys, now we will install PostgreSQL, pgAdmin4 and restore database. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Let's Hey guys, in this video we will go through SQL setup and installation. Firstly, we are going to install pgAdmin and afterwards PostgreSQL and restore database. Let's start. pgAdmin is a graphical interface we will use to make queries. For this course, you can use either pgAdmin4 or pgAdmin3. Both will work fine. pgAdmin4 opens in the browser and pgAdmin3 opens as a desktop program. PostgreSQL is the actual SQL engine that stores the data and we will actually query from. We will connect PostgreSQL server to pgAdmin and restore a database to that server. Before we start, make sure to check this lecture resource link that contains the DVD rental.tar file that will be used to restore the database. That's the actual compressed database file we will be using. After you download, please do not unzip it. Just download and remember its location. At the end of this video, we will be ready to start practicing SQL queries by using pgAdmin and discover how useful it is for software testing. Let's start the installation. Now please open any browser and Google pgAdmin. Here, you need to open this website pgadmin.org. pgadmin is the most popular and feature-rich open-source administration and development platform for PostgreSQL. The reason I choose pgadmin is that it's totally free to use and is compatible with any device you have. And together with PostgreSQL, they connect immediately and you don't need to worry about any additional setup. On this page, please click Download. Here, now you need to choose your operation system. If you are using Mac, please click this link, or Windows, this one. I'm recording this video by using my Mac laptop, so I will choose Mac OS. Here, as you see, there are lots of versions. Please always download the latest one. At the time I record this video, the latest version is pgAdmin4 version 4.10. Here, because I use Mac, the file format is .dmg. If you are using Windows laptops, you should download .exe file. So please click on it. After you finish downloading, click on the file. Here, agree. Once you finish the installation, pgAdmin will open in your browser. pgAdmin for using your browser's user interface. So you can even disconnect from the internet and pgAdmin4 will continue working. And when you open it first time, it will ask you to create a password. The most important thing that you should remember this password. If you forget it, there is nothing I can do. You will need to reset your password and you will lose your connection to database. I set my first password as password because it's only a local connection and there is no risk. So I will write my password. Now pgAdmin4 is ready. Our next step is PostgreSQL installation. Now please open any tab and Google PostgreSQL. Here, we should open PostgreSQL.org website. As they say, PostgreSQL, the world's most advanced open source relational database. It's also free to use and compatible with any devices. At the time I'm recording this video, this is the way it looks. Maybe it will change later on, but you only need to click download. Please choose your operation system. It can be Mac OS, Windows or Linux. And after, you have to click download the installer. I always prefer to install the latest version possible. At the time I'm recording, the latest version for Mac OS X is 11.4. You can also install it for Windows 64. You can also install 10.9. It will work perfectly. So please click download link and click the file. Now we will follow the installation process. Click next. Here, you can see that this installer will install PostgreSQL Server, pgAdmin4, Stack Builder, and Command Line Tools. We already installed pgAdmin4. You can uncheck this box and continue. The reason that we installed pgAdmin4 is that some of my students, they had issue when they installed it all together. So that's why it's always better to install pgAdmin4 first and after PostgreSQL. Click Next button and Next again. This will automatically create a port on your laptop. You don't need to worry about it. Click Next. 
You can see here the list of the programs will be installed on your laptop. And click Finish button. Our SQL Server is ready. You don't need to do anything else right now. Please open PG Admin for again. Here, on the left side, you see the servers. Click here. Here, immediately you will see PostgreSQL 11. If you install a different version, it will also appear here. And you need to write your admin password here. As you see, we have only one database which is predefined, PostgreSQL. Now we would like to create a new one with our tar file. So right click database, create. You have to define the database name. There are some other options, but we don't need to worry about them now. Click Save button. So we created an empty database. Now we will restore our DVD rental .tar file. Right click the database, restore. At this file name field, you have to choose the path of your file. You can either directly write it or click this three dot and choose the location. And after, click Restore Options. Here, it's really important that we should set predata, yes, post data, yes, and the data, yes. Please leave other options as it is. Now click Restore. Some of you can see this error pop-up. It means that you already restored this database before. So there is nothing to worry, just ignore it. Now our database is ready. Let's write our first query and see that if it works. Now please right click the DVD rental database and open query tool. Here, this is the place that we write queries and see the data in database. Our first query will be select asterisk from film. And here, this lightning button means that this execute or refresh. Click on that button. As you see, we select all the data from our film table. There are hundreds of data here. Maybe some of you will observe firstly, message tab opened, which says successfully run, total query runtime. Here, if you click data output, you can immediately see the data in this table. That's it for now. In the next video, we will continue practicing SQL queries and understand why it's so important for us testers. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.